Hi, I'm Mark Cleggan and welcome to the Photographer Academy and today we're talking speed lights. Uh, in this film we're just going to be really looking at the absolute back to basics elements with speed lights. Uh, why? Um, probably the biggest pro problem that you know the entry level pro, the advanced amateur and so on has, especially when they start to work with these little kind of off camera portable flashes um, or on camera portable flashes, is that they really don't understand the principles of how kind of all things work together and in this short film I just want to kind of really explore that a little bit. A couple little things to begin with, um, some terminology you're going to get use, used to. One of it is speed light, that name refers to this portable flash or a flash that was uh, originally designed to fit on the camera hot shoe. A hot shoe refers to the camera information, so in other words, um, on the top of the camera, uh, the camera here, this is what we refer to as a hot shoe. It can also be referred to when we have an intelligent cable um, or an intelligent device that actually is, is receiving a lot more information to the flash than just fire. Another thing is a cold shoe. The cold shoe is basically uh, a little um, a kind of bracket that allows us to fit our flashes to, to allow them to be positioned away from the camera itself. The speed light is designed, as I said, for illumination. It's really used for either create a creative effect or it's being used to uh, solve a problem. Those problems could be working in a dark location where you want to illuminate the subject a little bit. It might be working uh, on a very, very sunny day where the subject is fully lit by sun sunlight and you need to fill in the shadows. Or you might be using it in a more creative fa fashion where you're looking to perhaps uh, zoom in the flash, where you kind of just light a very small part of the area, the area or take the flash off camera and create a new direction to the lighting. So that's the kind of the basic of the reasons of why we'd be using flash with it. Um, most of you are going to get going with actually you know the flash on cam camera but I promise you the kind of the techniques that we're going to be showing you during this series will pretty much work very very similar whether the camera uh, the, uh, the flash is on the camera or the flash is actually on a cold shoe. So let's actually start to explore the flash itself. So um, I'm just using here what is a Canon 580EX2 flash head um, and what this is, it's a, a portable flash designed for a Canon camera. Duh. <laughs> um, this um, fitted to the camera hot shoe will work if it's a Canon camera but it's pretty much not going to work in the same way if it's fitted to any other camera manufacturer. In fact you can do some damage to both the flash and to the camera if you're not careful because of the uh, intelligent parts below here. It's all these little kind of little buttons that kind of send the information through from flash to, cam uh, to camera and back again. The flash is going to have ba basically controls in some way and it doesn't matter whether you're using a Nikon type or a Canon type or a third, par third party type like we've seen here on the desk. Um, they're, they're all going to work in a very, very similar way. The first thing is obviously uh, switching on. There's going to be a button there. Um, so I've just got a little clip here which kind of just sets it to come on with it. Um, whereas on the uh, third party kind of flash gun that we have here for id instance, I have to press and hold the on button until it comes alive and then it's ready to work. So again, they'll all work, as I said, in a very, very similar way. You just need to actually kind of just get familiar with the settings. Then the kind of, probably the, the, the first things that you need to get to use of is um, the modes. And on this flash we have three modes. It's ETTL, uh, which is a valuative through the lens meet metering, um, especially when it's linked into all the intelligent part of the, cam of the camera. Um, it's kind of receiving information how much light is coming through the camera and then it will actually uh, allow the burst of flash, the explosion of flash to kind of uh, help, help you create the effect that you're trying to do. So in, T in TTL mode here, that's the one option. If I just click onto the mode button here, um, you can see it goes into the M and M is for manual. Manual flash means that we're basically set, setting all the power. So to kind of just scroll through the powers on this specific flash, I just press my little button here and then I start to either use the, uh, rotate the dial in a clockwise direction to increase the power with the maximum being one to one. Um, or I can um, click the button again and use it in an anti-clockwise -clock rotation here and this will actually do it down to the minimum which is 128th of the power, so a little kind of real blip of the flash. Um, and, and that's our two kind of major 
settings, the ETTL or TTL in some manufacturers is the kind of the intelligent way, the automatic way. It's, hel it's helping you use the flash uh, in, in, in a kind of a basics where in the manual element we, uh, we have to be very care careful the distance in relationship to the, sub uh, the subject and the flash and the power settings on here. Uh, why? Because obviously it doesn't know how much power to put out. So whatever we set in, it's going to fire. And that's why we usually use a light meter to measure the amount of flash that we need when we're working in a manual mode to get perfect results each time. There's a third option in the mode, uh, which is basically in the, mul uh, the multi. And the multi is like a strobosonic. So in other words, it flashes like you're in a disco uh, and it kind of just uh, puts uh, loads and loads of pul uh, pulses and we can tell it how many pulses and for how long. Um, it's not a technique that we use very often. In fact, I hardly ever use it at all. Um, but it is there for obviously the kind of the specialist looks and so on. Would, it would be great to create uh, a kind of a dancer uh, dancing across a stage where perhaps you want the burst of images actually all within the same frame and so on, where it kind of just has all those little kind of pulses of flash to kind of freeze the action as it's going through. Um, but for probably most photographers, they're going to be using the, T, uh, the TTL or the ETTL mode here, as I said, or they're going to be using the manual mode. Okay, whichever ever mode we're in, um, the flash will usually give you a few op options as well, and that is going to be high speed sync or second cur curtain sync. The flash by default um, is in what they refer to as a normal mode. So it means anything from the recommending sh shutter speed of the camera manufacturer for Canon, it's usually 200 of a second and below, it will kind of sync in perfect harmony. Um, however, as soon as I start to uh, increase the shutter speed above the 200th of a second, the explosion of the gas, the exion gas that is, is basically a flash gun, when it explodes in the kind of the flash duration, it can't match the time that the shutter is ob open. And you'll find that in some part of your frame, you're going to get a black line. And that's where the flash isn't giving you enough illumination or any illumination to the sensor itself because the shutter speed is too fast to see the explosion of the full gas itself. And that is where we start to use what is we refer to as high-speed sync. It's often referred to as a little kind of um, lightning bolt with a H or just a lightning bolt. And uh, just, just by putting it in that mode, as long as the um, cameras and the flashes are in an automatic communication together, whether it's via uh, a flash-to-flash -flash communication, often called commander and slave or master and slave, or they're in a cable uh, connection. So in other words, there's a cable coming from the hot shoe of the camera out to the speed light itself will allow the flash then to actually use those faster, higher shutter speeds and still make use of the, the kind of the high speed sync, which allows you, as I said, to actually work in that much, much kind of higher shutter speed. Be careful that you don't work too high in shutter speed, of course, because if you work too fast, there's not enough of the flash power explosion, as it were, to be seen by the camera in the environment that you are. But at least it kind of allows you to shoot, as I said, in much higher shutter speeds. The other mode is the uh, second curtain sync, often referred to as rear curtain sync. And what this means is that if we're photographing with very, very slow shutter speeds, um, it allows the flash to fire at the end of the uh, exposure. Now, the reason it does that is to make sure that if you've got, say, a bride and groom dancing across the floor and they're spinning in the direction towards the flash, that if the flash fires in its normal way, it flies at the beginning of the exposure itself which means then you would have a photograph of the bride and groom here, but then they would also be spinning into some of the light of the flash itself, and you'd get a kind of a real, basically a rubbish image, because obviously you have this kind of ab ambient light in the scene that kind of records some of the detail on the, face, uh, the faces and looks a little bit weird. Whereas if we were um, in second curtain sync or rear cur curtain sync, so um, it fires at the end of the exposure as such, any of the ambient light in the scene that is already light in the bride and groom, let's say, um, is kind of still record, uh, recording them, but then just as the exposure is about to complete, in other words, when we take the exposure and we'll say on a 15th or an 8th of a second, um, as the exposure comes to the end, the flash will then pop, which means that all the quality and all the, de uh, the detail and, of course, the main exposure onto the, sub uh, the subjects is caught at the end. So you, you kind of have a light trail with a perfect exposure at the end instead of a perfect exposure at the beginning with a kind of a blurry effect kind of going through the photograph. So again, um, as a rule of thumb, if you're working outside in very bright circumstances, use what is the um, uh, high-speed sync 
again, that is the lightning bolt with the H or just the, light, uh, the lightning bolt. If you're working in inside and you're photographing below a 60th of a second, you basically may as well use the second curtain sink here because, as I said, it will fire at the end of the expo exposure and give, and give you an image that pretty much looks a little bit sh uh, sharper than uh, one shot in a normal way. Other little things to kind of look at then, uh, let's just kind of put that back to the, nor the normal mode, um, is uh, the kind of the pilot is often the lit button, is obviously the test button that will actually kind of fire the flash to make sure everything works. Um, you're going to have, um, for some flashes, you're going to have an illumination. If you press this button here, um, it will illuminate the dial. That's brilliant if you're working in very, very dark locations, of course. We're in a well-lit in studio in here, so you can't really see it. Um, then there's also the custom functions. And if you press and hold that button, you can see it comes up with a, a different kind of look and feel. And then all I need to do is basically use the, the dial here to kind of set them into a different mode. And uh, each of the camera flash manufacturers will give you a kind of a guide to what all these custom functions mean and so on. Probably you're only going to need to know one or two of the kind of the settings anyway. One is perhaps to the flash doesn't go off. Uh, in, a, in other words, it doesn't go to sleep, especially if you're using some of the advanced skills that we're going to be showing in future films. Um, but as far as the custom function is concerned, that is there to, uh, again, as I said, help you. Another big, big one uh, for creativity, as well as the, ba the basics, is the ability to be able to kind of zoom the flash. What the zoom in of the flash does, if I just uh, press in, uh, the zoom button there for a minute, and then I turn the dial, you can see the numbers start to increase. Um, what goes up to the maximum on this flash of 105. If I uh, rotate it in the anti-clockwise method here, you can start to see the numbers start to actually go down. And then eventually they'll come back to what is just the zoom on this particular flash, which means it's back into its normal mode. Now, what the zoom does, uh, specifically, it kind of mimics a zoom lens. So as you, uh, let's say you're on a 24 to 105 lens, which is perfect for this kind of flash, uh, the 24 element, um, it's kind of really at the full wide, and the flash needs to go, hang on a minute, Mark, I need to actually spread this light wider. Now, as it is, the basics of this flash is at, thir at 35. That's why it's showing you. Um, however, if we look on the front of most of the flashes as well, they'll have an ability to drop down a simple wide angle diffuser here, um, or some will come with a little bit of a, a diffusion cap to actually place onto the front of the flash. And what that does then, it kind of just spreads the light a little bit more. Because just like studio flash, really what we're trying to do with a small flash is either, either make it very, very small, that's where we use the zoom facility, or we want to make it very, very broad and very, very wide, and that's where we use the accessories, things like the diffusion caps, to uh, kind of create that wider light. The zoom, though, as I was saying to you, it, it allows us to kind of um, mimic as the zoom is. Uh, now, when I'm in the natural mode for the uh, flash itself, and I, I did use a zoom, the flash would track uh, the lens. So in other words, as I zoomed out towards the 105, the flash knows, hang on a minute, he's zooming into this scene, I need to three, throw the uh, light into a smaller area of the scene, so I'm going to just funnel it in. It's a bit like magnifying the sun, uh, so we're kind of putting it to a point again. And then as you zoom back again, of course, it then starts to actually kind of make it go wide and wide as you're going through it. So the zoom facility uh, is not only great in a kind of a basic wide angle lens zoom kind of element, but it can also be used in a creative kind of touch, which we'll be showing you in a future film as well with it. So the other functions uh, of the flash to help us kind of get more creative are going to be the ability to change the direction to the flash. Even if this is on camera, it doesn't need to stay on camera as such. So, uh, you know, I've got the one on here for a minute, and this allows me to bounce upwards, turn to the sides, and so on. And what I mean, I mean by that, most of the kind of the um, camera manufacturer flashes, well, in fact, have a little button on the side here that you press to kind of unlock it, and this allows you to actually tilt the flash into different ways to bounce the light or to redirect the light, say, off a wall, off towards the side and so on. So that's an easy way for us to completely change the look and feel of our, our light that is illuminating our subject, of course, by just using this kind of tilt function with it. When we're using the tilt function as well, often we're going to need to revert to perhaps the likes of the bounce card. Now, this little bounce card here uh, in this particular flash is set within the flash itself, so I'll just kind of push that in again. So as I pull out the, the wide-angle diffuser, 
it drops down and then obviously this little kind of uh, card is kind of just adding in a little bit of a redirection to the flash. Um, this isn't going to use all the energy of the flash in fact because a lot of it is still going upwards. Um, this is often referred to, this little piece of card here, as a catch light card and the reason being on that it just pushes enough light into the subject's faces to bring a little bit of uh, more directional illumination instead of all the light going up and then back down again which can actually kind of cause bags under the eyes and so on. Um, but what this does is actually adds that little bit of light in towards the eye and then actually gives us that lovely catch light. So that's where we get the kind of the name from. Um, another way as well is to obviously kind of use uh, um, access accessories to kind of control all of the flash and we'll be showing you that on another film as well with it. So again, the first, the first things are, as I said, is that little bit of a catch light card here to uh, help with the bounce of the light and so on. But I also mentioned about the wide angle diffuser here and that's the part, as I said, that we use when we're using uh, quite wide angle LED lenses, in other words, below uh, th 35, which is the basics of the, the kind of the width and the spread of this light as we're going through. So that wide angle diffuser there will just help, help us uh, kind of, as I said, spread that light just that little bit, bit more. Whilst we're kind of looking at it here for a minute, let's just actually just step backwards for a minute and just kind of talk about that zoom. And um, the, the whole point of the zoom here, it kind of moves in and out, as you might be able to see as it kind of magnifies in and pushes back out again. And that's what that, uh, um, that kind of controller was doing on the back of the zoom flash itself. So remember the tilt, not only to the side, but also the up, up and down. Pretty much I can guarantee you're going to have a battery compartment in some way. Uh, if we just spin this around again and we look at the front, um, this is the kind of the, on, on, on this particular uh, Canon flash here, um, this is pretty much the controller of sending the information to other flashes. So this is the little bit of a, a kind of an infrared sig signal that is sent across a room to see another flash. So it would need to actually see the other sig uh, the signal on the, um, the, the kind of the slave flash that we call, uh, call it to kind of get that to fire. Uh, and often, uh, especially when we're working with off-camera flash, we're going to be pointing this in a different direction to perhaps where our flash is going. And the reason being will be just to make sure that the controller here is, is kind of uh, point, uh, pointing the right direction to kind of um, send the information to another flash gun to fire. Last but no means least then, some of them will give you the option to have a, um, uh, an external battery to plug, plug in, uh, as well as a PC sync. Um, so socket here, which will allow for a, ca a cable to be attached to, again, tell the flash to fire, specifically when it's on the likes of a cold, cold tube. And that is pretty much the back to basics of a speed light. And I apologize that if you think that is a little bit ba a basic, but it it's, it's worth getting to know your speed light, what other manufacturer that you use, whether it's a third par party flash, whether it's the camera manufacturer's flash itself, you need to make sure that you understand the basic kind of dials with it. And that's it. I hope, hope you've enjoyed this quick film. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.